Many New York fans mad at me, like, I ain't really give a fuck. Like, I don't hold a record record over there. Like, y'all championship ain't older than my niece and nephew put together. Like, shit, bro, that's on y'all. And y'all GM, I don't really give a fuck. Shit, buddy traded me. I just made my move, well, went with my move and made some out of it. Now I got this ring. Now niggas mad at me. Y'all can't get mad because it ain't no blue ring. It's a red one with a K and a C on that bitch. And I love them folks. <laughs> Kadarius Tony. Wow. Hard to believe that right here in the middle of summer, as we're just really days away from training camp for the New York football giants, I find myself directly in the middle of a conflict against a guy who could never get on the field, um, was briefly a part of the New York Giants, but just can't let things go. As we just watched this video, that was that was Friday night, Friday afternoon. This video makes its uh, rounds amongst Giants online content creators. And it makes its way to myself. And I'm blown away by it. Not not because that's not who Kadarius Tony is. We see this behavior from him all the time. But I'm like, this guy won a ring just a few months ago. Played a pivotal part in that Super Bowl. Defeating our most hated rival, the Philadelphia Eagles. So we we kind of went into the offseason. I, I had completely forgiven Kadarius Tony about all the bullshit that he had said about the fans and the organization prior to the playoffs, and after he was traded. Because he did a great thing. He, he helped do a great thing, which was cause misery to the city of Philadelphia and the worst fans in sports. But what's happened since? So we have this video, and just last month in June, we get this video where Kadarius Tony is out getting his ring, his Super Bowl ring fitted, and he has another message for We the Giants Faithful. That Super Bowl ring coming this thing right up. Okay, after that video, I'm like, okay, big, you know, fuck you to the Giants fans, F you to everybody else in New York, because for some reason, I guess New York did him wrong by drafting him and putting him in the NFL. And so that was it. That was that was going to be it. Summertime, we're focusing on Saquon and everything we got going here. But but here we are just a few weeks later. And this guy can't stop talking about his ex-girlfriend. And so after the video where he's in a closet, for various reasons, I'm sure. But Kidarius records that video that we saw at the start of this video in a closet. And of course, I have to respond. And I respond on Twitter and a tweet that went viral. And I had no intention of, uh, that was it. That was my one statement on Kadarius Tony. How the hell and, and why are we talking about this guy? And how surprised I was thinking that that would be it. Admittedly, there's there's my tweet. I accuse Kadarius Tony of rightfully not understanding the New York Giants playbook and faking injuries. And that's not coming from me. Let's remember, that was Kadarius himself. That was the tweet he put out back last season, joking about if it was funny if he wasn't hurt. And, of course, he scores his first touchdown as a chief and mocks like he's having an injury, marking that his, mocking that his hamstring has come back. So the notion that this guy was playing with uh, the team's emotions was that there was something not on the surface it, it, that was created a long time ago. That was created really back last summer. So that was my response. You know, this guy is a prick. He's out here. He can't stop talking about not just the team, but the fans themselves. And so this whole thing blew up. It, it got crazy in the last 24, 48 hours. Different giant fans, different giant content creators taking their own sides. Some of them did not want to get involved in this, and I respect that. I, I said, I spoke on this. I commend them. I don't have that ability. I love this team too much. I put it on my back. I'm a shield for the New York football giants. It'd be one thing if you were talking, you know, directly about X's and O's and where we are, you know, on the football field. But you're going after the fans. For, for what? The fans didn't start the Kadarius Tony war. So this whole thing blows up out of proportion for 24, 48 hours. Various sides, like I said, taking their sides. And I thought that was it. Uh, but I wake up and I'm wrong. So Kadarius Tony felt that obviously what I had to say was so untrue, was so full of shit, that he had to respond to his former team. 
And so here's what I get. I see Kadarius Tony sends me this message. Laugh out loud, pussy. When you speak on me, speak facts. And I'll interpret this real quick because I know how to speak Kadarius Tony. Laugh out loud, pussy. When you speak on me, speak facts. I knew that weak-ass playbook and could give a fuck about a Dayball, Joe Shane, or you. Y'all broke-ass speaking on me, not vice versa. Fuck the Giants, my boy. Go get a ring. Okay. Now, it took me a couple times to look at this. I'm thinking to myself, first of all, who fucking spoke about you? This, and this is one thing. Chiefs fans are all over the internet right now. God bless them. They're riding a high from the Super Bowl, and they got barbecue sauce dripping out of their ears because they don't understand that this guy is the guy that started all this. This guy has gone to go fitted for your ring and talk shit about the Giants and their fans. This is the guy that hides in his closet and goes on Instagram Live and talks about the Giants fans. This is started by Kadarius Tony. 50-50. Obviously, he didn't like my shot, my take at him that he didn't know the playbook. It sure as hell sounds like he didn't know the fucking playbook. But as you can see, before I could respond, after being called a pussy, after my team getting dragged, I couldn't even respond because this guy blocks me. Classic Kadarius Tony move. Classic pussy move by Kadarius Tony. So, first, a couple things here. Again, number one, the playbook comment, the weak ass playbook comment. Obviously, you're talking about Brian Dable and you're talking about offensive quarter coordinator Mike Kafka. The, the most hilarious part of this is that Kadarius is a lot of that playbook, a lot of those plays from Kafka are implemented in the Chiefs offense. It's where he comes from. So, when taking a shot at the weak ass playbook, you're, you're kind of taking a shot at your own playbook, which I don't know what Andy Reid does. Maybe their playbook is mostly done in crayons and, you know, so he can picture, so he can understand what he's got to do. But this guy did not grasp. He was not trusted to get on the field. It's, it's clear as day. So that alone was hilarious. And then the next one, you know, he don't give a fuck. Basically, fuck Dable and fuck Joe Shane. So Brian Dable, you can tell it. And then he tried to do everything he could to get this guy to acclimate him to be a New York football giant under his regime in the Brian Dable era. We had him at practice. We're playing his shitty trap rap music all throughout practice. He's trying to kiss his ass. Giants are seeing that, A, throughout the summer. Not only can this guy, quote-unquote, not get healthy, he hurt his hamstring rehabbing another hamstring. Like, we're supposed to forget that? This guy can't get on the field. He can't understand the play, but for you to be trusted enough to put him in situations, instead, you got to rely on David Seals. Because even when you're healthy, you can't get on the field because nobody trusts your ass. The locker room never defended you because they don't like your ass. But the vitriol on Joe Shane, clearly, again, here's a guy shipped out. Joe Shane saw this picture clear as day. Nobody knows what the hell Dave Gettleman saw and Kadarius Tony, I tried. We all tried to see it. There's flashes of it. There's so there's flashes of it. But this guy's a head case. And Joe saw it a mile away. So clearly, Kadarius is still bitter at Joe Shane. Still bitter at Brian Dable because he wouldn't put him in the offense. Because he didn't have trust in Kadarius Tony. And obviously, the Chiefs and Andy Reid do. And they gave him a coloring book. And he could study it. And they feel comfortable putting him in for three plays a game. I don't mind the personal shots on me. I brought it. You know, I brought it right to him. Was I surprised to see this guy be so soft that he came to my inbox and, and blocked me like the pussy that he is? No, I'm not really surprised. The guy's softer than toilet paper. This guy acting tough in his music videos and in Twitter and in DMs and running away. Meanwhile, this guy's scared to death of grass. This guy sees a, a blade of grass and he blows his fucking hamstring out just by the sight of it. But we're going to call it even now. I, I wanted the fans to see this for themselves. What Kadarius Tony publicly thinks of Brian Dable, that offense, and Joe Shane and the New York football giants. This is a weird, bitter war. But I probably would have been pissed too if I had to sit in a tattoo chair for hours having to get a Giants and New York City tattoo completely removed off my back, completely covered over. And all the money that would have spent 
into that project. I'd be pissed too. I'd be pissed at Joe Shane. Bottom line, you're a Super Bowl champion. Months, of, months removed from being a champion. But all of those diamonds, the millions of diamonds that you have on your teeth, all of that bling, all of that shine that we can still see through, cannot hide the fact that we see that you've had the Giants' dick in your mouth permanently since the moment you were traded from this franchise. Get it out. Enough's enough. Focus on you. Focus on the Chiefs. We're weeks away from the season and your annual trip to the injury report. Get better. Do you. We're the New York football giants. You're the Kansas City Chiefs. Get that through your fucking eyebrows.